And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, and just like that, we are back with you. Just like that. New studio, new season of The Bonfire. Season two. I know we're not a TV show, but we're calling it season two. But we absolutely are. There's going to be different story arcs. We're in our second year. Yeah. We said Jacob's been killed off. Jacob's character's dead. So uh, now we have a... Will uh, he come back? Who knows? I don't know. Now we've got a gruff, older black man as our producer who doesn't take no jive. <laughs> Big J. Okerson, Dan Soder here, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. It is the bonfire. We're Bizak. Wow. I know you <laughs> missed us. I heard you missed us. We're back. And you use terms like Bizak. Bizak. <laughs> That's like, that sounds like a math teacher who's trying to be cool. I'm going back full-blown Philly Wigger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, guess who's Bizak? Oh, that shit was dope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go get some skirt. Oh, skirt? <laughs> some skirt. Let's get That's some like leg. Nine, yeah, it's 1950s. Let's get some leg. Yams. You're going to get some leg for show. The one that the timeless one that always makes me laugh is Muff. But, uh, I do love Muff. Let's go get some Muff. I use it a lot. Do you? Muff? Yeah. Oh, I bring up Christine's Muff a lot. saying yes. You'd say that's his number one term for yeah. Yeah, I'll use vaginal muff. pleasure? I, gash. Oh, Jesus. Well, gash is what I'm trying to hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's put a little oomph Christine's on Christine's a it. mile away from the microphone. She doesn't understand new studio yet. Yeah. There you go. You back? Better. Oh, okay. Christine always has eyewitness ability with microphone. I feel like she doesn't know where to talk or like, <laughs> I saw what happened. Okay, Miss Ranker. So, okay, the guy came to my house. Uh, yeah. I knew no, you got to get up. Uh, Miss Nick. And he came over and, no, here? Do I do it here? Okay, here. On. So the guy came over. Please get on the mic. They, 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 have a, they uh, built yeah. us a new studio. Us. Well, it's just for the bonfire. Look at all the room to do kip-ups in here. Oh, God. Foreshadowing. Oh, foreshadowing Wednesday's episode. We have a new Not Live for you coming on Wednesday, but we are live with you right now. We are here in the moment. And the new Not Live, we were trying to do kip-ups in the studio, but it was in the comedy office, and uh, we all got hurt. Everybody got hurt. Everybody got hurt. We Every have so single much one to of catch us up hurt. on, buddy. We have so much to catch up on. Well, I mean, a lot's happened since we've done a, a live show. You've gone to Montreal. I've gone to Dublin. You've I, gone I went to, to 73 concerts. That's a lot. I went to so many concerts. What concerts did you go to? Out in Chicago. I did Chicago Open Air for one day. Well, who was Slipknot, playing in Chicago? Saw Slipknot and uh, Marilyn Manson. I don't like all that boys with the makeup up there. Yeah. North side of Chicago getting <laughs> a little worried. Kid, because a sausage pedal, eh? Hey, if uh, that Marilyn guy tries going for his own dick and putting his mouth again, <laughs> I'm going to have to run up there like a dog with a chew toy. Beat well, him up a little bit. I'll start off by telling you this. Marilyn Manson, it's done. Is You're such a big Marilyn Manson Look, fan. Listen, that said... That said, there's some people who have even tweeted at me and said, I'm seeing him right now, man. He's 100% on his game. I'll challenge that those people have never seen him really like at his best. Oh, you're going hipster, Manson. Because I knew Marilyn Manson before you. I know. Marilyn I really Manson. hate doing that, but I watched. Oh, no, it's the whole cool. Time. I do it with Queens of the Stone Age. All I time. couldn't even let Christine just overly enjoy it because I just got to be there, going like, "This is just fucked up." Did he ruin it? Have you seen Manson before? He didn't ruin it, but he was fat shaming him like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was just such a bummer, man. It was. He just, We're all fat now in the cake show. <laughs> in the cake show. <laughs> hey, Dad, uh, did you eat all of my ding dongs? Uh, Dad, we're out of Pringles, and I have like four friends over. Did you uh, eat the Pringles? Uh, hey, shit. Did you drink all the soda in the garage? Uh, <laughs> it never ends. Yo, your dad's the worst. Yo, I hate your dad, <laughs> Jeff Manson. Dad, where's the dog? Did you sacrifice him in a ritual? Uh, <laughs> oh, Fluffles. <laughs> hey, Dad, did, you, did Mark walk in on you blowing yourself? Uh, <laughs> He's got to tell everybody at school. Oh, I hate being your son. Oh, uh, yeah, he just was like, I mean, you, Christine, you got to have some video of that, of his new, I mean, there's actual, there's, there's trails you can go on YouTube where they show you like multiple, just like it's over. So you as a fan, did it take you out of the concert? Did you not enjoy the concert? Nope. You didn't enjoy the concert? No. I didn't Christine, enjoy the did you enjoy the concert? I did enjoy the concert, but I never saw him in his heyday, and I remember his performances like on the VMAs from his heyday, and it's just a different thing. It's a different thing. Dude, 
First of all, he would always be like kind of gross. He'd do like a lot of gross things on stage. Like what? And it was kind of cool. Because I find certain things gross that you might not find because gross. Like not texting people back to me is gross. <laughs> <laughs> or <Right>. you saying <laughs> he displayed gross behavior traits? Yeah. Empty promises are gross. What's <laughs> 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 gross to you? Marilyn Manson is just a bad person on stage? <laughs> no, dude. He's just like, it's... Well, so all the gross stuff he used to do, like he'd come out, like he would like piss his pants. <laughs> Like purposefully, but like that's hilarious. It's the best thing ever. Can I do that? Oh, dude. Hello, what's up, Tempe Improv? Good to be here dude, for my is, opener. This is when he was no bullshit. I mean, this is like uh, what are you talking about? This is ninety eight VMAs. This is ninety eight VMAs. I mean, he was beautiful. And I don't mean beautiful in the sense it's the wrong music. There we go. It's wrong. It's the wrong. Uh, Oh, no, now it's right. Yeah. The marching band. Dude, this is... He was beautiful, and I mean that in the sense of... I mean, obviously, he wasn't, like, beautiful. Nice and slender. Yeah, but he just looked so fucking unique and awesome. be oppressed by the fascism of Christianity. All this bullshit. He, like, he was no selling it. oppressed by the fascism of beauty. Because I see you all sitting out there trying your hardest not to be ugly. Trying your hardest not to fit in. Trying your hardest to earn your way into heaven. I don't know who this guy is, but I don't like his ass. You want to be in a place that's filled with a bunch of assholes. Oh, dude, he went for it so hard. Here's when his butt cheeks are out, remember? I'm peeing my pants right now, oh, MTV. Just taking a hot whiz. No, but I see him pee his pants. He blues, he's a big on blowing snot rockets and all yeah, that shit. Yeah, dude, he should hang out with my uncle. Which, a lot, of rock, which a lot of rock stars do, by the way. And football coaches. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of rock stars blow the snot rock on stage. But he, so he does the Antichrist Superstar song um, that I modeled my whole intro of my special off of. Yeah. The, uh, the Antichrist Superstar thing. Where he's up on the podium, where he's flopping over the podium. He can't really flop on the podium anymore because he's chubby and he might hurt himself or is fall. He just, is he just winded? No, he just can't. Like, it's not the same dude. Well, he's older, man. So much older. Yeah, but this was one that, you know what? I'd hate to say that I think this might be the one act where he had to stay young. Although we watched very briefly at my house today when you came over, we watched a little bit of the crusty uh, oh, the man. end the end concert. For, we watched uh, Motley Crue. We watched Motley Crue's documentary, The End, and we watched they were a little bit of it. Oh God, interviewing the people in the fucking uh, before the show and in the in the parking lot. There's it's nothing Neil. better than than hair metal fans that have stuck with it. It's just find him doing beautiful people now. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, dude, he's grizzled. As grizzled as the Molly Crew fans. Yes. I saw them in Reno, Nevada well, he's in 1988. I think he's And I remember I did a cap of meth, and then I went in the place and I fought a cop. I won. I look good, too. I was in leather pants, long hair. Just make up work. It was a rip dinger of a show. <laughs> yeah. Um, if she finds him doing beautiful people now, it's such a fuck. Yeah, here you go. He looks great. She's got my body. One of the beautiful. I mean, too. He's wearing a vest because he's too heavy to go shirtless anymore. Look at his jumps. His whole movements are just weird and blocky. It's like when an old fighter gets too old for the foot movement, so they just got to stand and trade and, like. Yeah, but he, like. He's just. It's awful, man. Like, watching him lumber around the stage with his 47 year old body is bumming me out. Is it, sadder, is, is it sadder than like when Ric Flair would wrestle? And this and is like, yes, it is. It's sadder than that. Yeah, this would be, this is a bit of hearsay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say this is hearsay out of the gates here, but uh, I, I think he's just like, he's 47, he's making his money, I don't think he really gives a shit about this music at all anymore, and he presents it as such, and he's just like, li listen... So do you think he should just go all the way and get super fat? No, I think he should stop. I think he should get super fat. Can I, I just say I want him to get super fat? 
I want him to get like 390 pounds. Well, again, the hearsay is now uh, he's also all whacked out on like fucking absinthe and shit. And okay. he's like just fucked up. So it's Fun. like he just kind of doesn't give a shit maybe anymore. I'm. You know what? You're getting me on board. You love him. I like a less agile. I like a bulldog version of Marilyn Manson. His new album did really well. <laughs> For rock, his it's new cool. album did great. For okay. rock, it did very well. Did I'm, you like it? No. You I are did. just off board. This is your guy. Dude, he's my guy. And you're just not a fan anymore. He's 100% my guy, dude. I love him. No, you don't. You're shitting on him. Uh, it's not the same, man. You don't like him the way you don't like British comedy. Oh, I do not like... <laughs> I do not like British for, comedy. That's another foreshadowing of Wednesday's show. <laughs> oh. Jay is xenophobic in his comedy beliefs. I'm trying to learn these... Uh, thing. Oh, what's the password? Say it on the air, Lou. Uh, broadcast one, capital B. Oh my Christ! There you go. So if you ever infiltrate, every time the screen goes blank, I gotta do all this again. <laughs> it's just like watching. I never watch you type in an ad uh, password. Oh, it dude. looks like a first guy first day at his office. I'm single finger typer. Yeah, dude, you're great. You know how to type? Yeah, I can type pretty quick. You know how to type? Yeah, I'm pretty quick at type. <laughs> no, uh Yeah. Look, hold on. I'll type something. Christine can type. Wigs me out. I hunt and peck. But I know where everything's at. I could probably spell shooshtime.com without even looking at the computer. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Wait, can you see my screen? No. You're going to type something fast? Oh, can, you can't see this? The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. I can't see it. No. We're not set up for shit like that. Call me a fucking... Yeah, dude. I got quick old, old quick finger soda. Yeah? I got these long bony fingers. Christine can type too. It blows my mind. I got when these they tell me I have to send a fingers. transcript for anything? Like, can you send a transcript to your set? I'm like, oh, this is a nightmare. Like, I couldn't possibly. Like, Christine has to type it for me. Because you just do one word pecking. Yeah, one letter at a time. Yeah, but I kind of know where everything's at. Cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you got to put all your fingers to Y-O-U's it. Y-O-U's all in the same line. Y-O-U. Like, I know all those things. Yeah, so just do it with multiple fingers. Ass cap, right? Or ass difficult. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's QWERTY. I know QWERTY. Did you not take any typing classes or computer classes? I took a typing class briefly. This is our age gap, dude. Because my computer class wasn't about typing. It was like doing Logo. Remember the program Logo? Yeah. Pen up, pen down. The most you could play are the games like uh, like Oregon Trail, Gertrude's Ooh, yeah. Puzzles. Absolutely. I did all those Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Um, and I would... Uh, but the, with the typing class, it was actually on electric typewriters. And fuck Ooh. that. Fuck, that was the worst. I couldn't even pretend I want to do that. It was the m most horrible... Uh, my least favorite class. Hated it was typewriting? It. Yeah. Hated it. Hated well, it so obviously, much. you stuck with it, your old primitive way of typing. We almost had our first call the second season. Uh, someone was going to ask, they, or so they wanted to stick up for Marilyn Manson, but they hung up, I guess. Because they saw the recent video of the him number here spilling over his leather pants. 844 Comedy 9, 844 Comedy 9, 844 266 3399. Uh, that's to get a hold of us here at the bonfire if you want to talk. We haven't had any calls for the new, for season two yet. But, um,. Christine is putting up at us, at the, the Bonfire SXM, at the Bonfire SXM, Twitter and Instagram. She's going to be putting up all these videos we're talking about here. But uh, Marilyn Manson is done. He's done. It's done. He's still, my, he fav he's still my favorite of all time. What if he dropped weight Yeah, and just got like back to pissing himself? 100%. Smash, be, smashing kittens. One hundred percent. I'll be right there. You'll be right there. I'll be. What if he looks right over at you there. and goes, "You don't love me. You didn't love me when I was fat." I'll accept that. And he's right. I shouldn't have done oh, that. Oh, Jay's back. Maybe that's a thing I shouldn't have done. But in the right now, I, I gotta say he should stop. It's not good. I don't think you say stop as much as lose weight. No, stop. You want him to stop. Get it together. Get it together, Mary. And then come back if you want. But this has to stop. I don't even know who you are. He's got a weak chin and a fat neck now. <laughs> and, and it looks so weird. What does he look like? <laughs> I, just, just pull up pictures of him, Christine. You can see this guy. He's a bummer. But do before and afters. He was beautiful. <laughs> he was so cool looking. He does not. Lou, back me up. You're never a Manson fan. You were never. Not, you can't be a fan of the jam and Manson. Yeah, you can. I can't. <laughs> But I like the theater of it all, and I can see that it's not the same, but... So, look at that picture right there. That's a great picture right there, exactly. You're like, oh, he's so cool looking. Almost like a woman. Like a pretty woman. <laughs> bring up the video for Long Cold Road Out of Hell, Christine. Bring that up and play that song, actually. Sneaker Pimps Marilyn Manson. Dude, 
He looks like a beautiful woman. And it's so cool, the video. And But now what? Now in fact, like- I'll suggest anyone who uh, follows us on Twitter or does or, or watch this video. This video is insane. And this is still when he's cool, sleek, and slender. Oh, this is the height of his cool, sleek, and slender. I don't know if... The whole band, the whole band's a bunch of grizzled out. It's just bad. What do they look like, Jimmy? They look like a couple of dorks. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Okay, yeah. I get it. You see what I'm saying? Like, he's making that cool. He's wearing a fucking negligee, a women's lace gloves, and his hair's all done up like a chick. But he looks awesome still. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're saying you're saying yeah, and like you're gonna deny that. But you're, I, you're look at your face watching it. It's great. It's a great video. It's so good. I just feel like he's your friend's elaborate brother. Where you're like, all right, I got it. You're weird. <laughs> oh yeah, but he was beautiful. <laughs> yes. Now pull him up and pull him up now. I want to see what it looks like now. Now that Jay's got this crush out, now I see why his crush... Now he looks like... Leash. Yeah! Oh, God. He looks like a German DJ. Yes! Dieter. <laughs> uh, the way I disco dancing! Look at him. Oh. It's just a bummer. So you can yeah, tell it's a bummer, right? Yeah, he looks like an evil drug runner. Josh Homme right. looks exactly the same. Yeah. He's from aged, the fucking early 2000s to now. Josh Homme's aged gracefully. Exactly the same. Yeah. And you can still love that. I still I love them if you love for other the, if you love the Stones yes. in the fucking sixties love the Stones you can still love them now. There's actually something more lovable about the fact that they're all these little wrinkled old men. But he didn't change anything for except their aging. But if Keith Richards would have got fat, that would have been adorable. Listen, every the oh look at that look at him look at naked Marilyn Manson dicks all tucked. Dude, that is the funniest thing to bring up to tell a guy why to like a man. Look at him. Dude, look at his body. Look at it. Yeah. Look at his sleek lines. Yeah, he's like a, it's just like a hairless cat. <laughs> oh, so he fucking, uh, um, what you call it? So he, where the, all the gross shit used to be so cool. Yeah. And again, yeah. this is physically gross, not emotionally gross. Physically gross. Uh, the snot rockets, all that shit. You're like, not that you want to, I, I certainly would. Oh, look at him, Soder. Oh. Not that I would have ever wanted to get hit by it. He looks like Bono's retarded brother. <laughs> yeah, dude. He looks like he's gonna be melting. And look how cool he used to look. You know what else? He does? He's too lazy. He doesn't even wear the eye anymore. And that bums me out. He doesn't wear the, uh. At what point do you think he was leaving his house? And like, Marilyn, you're gonna put it in your eye? And he goes, it's not even worth it anymore. Yeah, who cares? Why? I'm 50 pounds But he weight. just did it fucking right. Big J doesn't want to fuck me anymore. What's the point? All the posing. What's the point? <laughs> all the all stage right. posing and all that stuff. Like, it's just, he doesn't even do it anymore. Because he knows that you're not into it anymore, Jay. He knows that you're not as turned I on. I hope to God that I have the power that he felt the energy I was giving off when he was doing that show because... And now it's a training montage? I was, I mean, I was mentally past my Chicago shows. And they were great. I had a blast in, in Zany's, uh, Chicago. Yeah. Uh, Rosemont and downtown. I had a blast. Um, you should see, Christine, if anyone put up a video from what I'm about to describe, the thing at uh, Chicago Open Air, uh, Antichrist Superstar song. So he goes up on that podium, and he blows a snot rocket, and the camera guys get happen to be right up on him when he does it, like in his face. Yeah. On the big, big screens. And he blows a big one, and it hangs on his lip. <laughs> look, just look. If you, if you do Manson snot rocket, I bet you can even find it. Oh. Actually, type in the word snot rocket. I did. Yeah, I mean, dude, one of dude, our, one of our one it of our, hangs on his lips. Ah, that's great. One of our uh, regular fans, Ryan Beck, you know Ryan in Tennessee, said current Aaron Marilyn Manson should be played at every Christian church in America as an example of how it ends. <laughs> the Christian church always comes out on top. I mean, no shit. There's a strong argument for that. <laughs> as you can see, the devil loving will get fat. He will stop being slender and fuckable and his fans will leave. Oh, because that is the devil working. This fucking snot rocket was so gross. Did you? And you, that's. And you're already not into it anymore. And I was already, yeah. Already so not into just it. watching it. Like, come on, clean yourself up. I'll tell you what happened. Good at open air festival. Well, funny. 
And if I told you this, my apologies. Have I told on the air, Lou? You're good for stuff like this. Have I told on the air my Max Weinberg son story? Oh. Meeting Slipknot. I mean, yeah, that you've met, that you were there when. Have I ever told it on the air? Yeah, the Ma- you were there when Max. Max Weinberg just son. happened to be for a brief meeting. Yeah. Uh, I saw Max Weinberg backstage at a Slipknot show when his son was 12 years old. Yeah. Lead singer came out to meet him. I just happened to be in the hallway for this meeting. I was not involved in any way. I just like. My buddy Craig Gass went to oh, Craig was on the show before. Yeah, that's right. Went to the bathroom, and I saw this meeting. <clears throat> and then several years later, I was hanging out with the guys from Corn who told me that uh, the drummer for Slipknot is now Max Weinberg's son, which was a cool. The way it even happened is cooler than that. It's that's a long right, story. That's awesome. It's a great story. I go backstage, Chicago Open Air Festival, only bump into one rock star, the drummer Max Weinberg's son from Slipknot. I can't wait to tell him the story. Yeah. In my mind, the story's going to blow his mind. Yeah. I start walking towards him. Another couple shanghais him first. Fuck. Uh, they're talking to him. It looks like they're not going anywhere anytime soon. And now, and you know this is an entertainer as I do, Dan, I'm looming. Yeah. And I hate that I'm looming. Normally, would just walk away from it. If it was Marilyn Manson. I'd walk away from that just to be like, I don't want to be the guy who loomed. It's probably yeah. going to go bad. When he meets me, he's going to think I'm the weirdo who's looming no matter what. But I go, this story's so great, I got to fucking get it out to him. Yeah. I go, um, I go back and I'm waiting. I smoke a, I start a cigarette up. Yeah. Stalling. I killing time. Christine's you, I almost. I you looking over. Sort of. And Christine's almost giving me like the like, uh, like maybe we should just like split. And I'm like, I know, but I, I just, this story's so good. I gotta tell the story. I'm I gotta, gotta tell the story. I'm gonna walk up to him. They, they walk away. He starts walking. His name's Jay also. Jay Weinberg. Jay? I go, Jay. Jay, he goes, yeah, I go, I go, I'm sorry. If I can steal you for one second, man, I just want to tell you this, this like pretty interesting story of, uh, six degrees of separation here. He's like, yeah, cool. And I, and I start telling the story. And I'm going through. First of all, I actually, actually, what's funny is the first thing I go, you're Max Weinberg's kid, right? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, yeah. And I go, so, blah, blah, blah. I'm in this hallway and I see this meeting and you guys meet up. And then I go on tour with Corn. I'm a comedian. I open up for Corn. Yeah. I go, trying to like put my mark on there where to yeah. let him know it's like, I'm, that it's okay. I'm a part. I'm, it's totally cool. I'm, I'm fine. Um, and I'm like, Forgetting the whole story out, and I go, I go, and then I talk to the guy from Corn, and he goes, "That's Max Weinberg's son," and I'm like, oh, wow, "How crazy is that?" He goes, uh, "He goes, oh, that's pretty cool, man," and he just goes off and like walks uh, off, and I'm like, "Oh," and then I think Christine may even pointed out to put it together, like, "It's Max Weinberg's son." He's probably not blown away that he's in a very famous band. Yeah, like he was probably like, "Yeah, I was probably going to be in a." My dad's in the E Street Band. Pretty famous band. Yeah. So. He seemed thoroughly unaffected by it. And yeah, I felt like, like a dildo. <laughs> the best part of those, I just imagine making you feel like a bigger dildo by being like, but hey, cool moment for you, huh? You got to see that. All right. but, but Manson was the uh, was the absolute uh, fucking worst. Here, we don't take this call, but Tim in Indiana uh, wants to know what kind of show I'm going to do for Oddball. I am hosting the uh, side stage again, the IFC uh, slightly off is that what it is called? Oh, I was the, gonna call uh, it IFC, what it was last year. I uh, the uh, Red's Apple Ale last Apple year. A. The IFC uh, side stage. I'm gonna be hosting that five to seven p.m. Uh, every night. So uh, if you come to Oddball, come out a little bit early and come see me. Uh, bring up some local guys from every city, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good time. Oddball's got some great fucking people on it, man. It's gonna be a, a lot a lot of fun here. Um, while we're on subject here, though, um, and this will be, I guess, our first call. We'll take Brian in Chicago. Chicago! Brian! How you doing, Brian? Are you from the north side or south side of Chicago? What's up, boys? Hey. From the south side. Okay. South side? All right. That sounds terrifying. Yeah. You have to see Man- <laughs> You went to see Manson just to find some white people. Yeah, he goes, oh my God, they're here. <laughs> um, Don't worry, I'm late as well. So You saw him at open air. Yeah, it was uh, it was very disappointing. I was there. That's, that's I the was, show. I was there for that. I was there for that show, and it yeah, was it was bad. Jay doesn't even want to bang him anymore. What kind of world do we do live? Do you in? recall the moment I'm trying to explain to Dan when he blew a snot rocket and it was on the big screen? <laughs> yeah, and it goes everywhere. And then all of a sudden, you're like, "Wow, did you really just that really snot right there?" All right, cool. <sighs> yeah, it wasn't like fucking. 
It wasn't cool anymore. Now he's just like an old guy blowing a snot rocket. <laughs> now he just looks like an old man. Hey, old man Manson, you got snot hanging off your lip. Uh, Brian, you could uh, confirm this too. He doesn't sing a lot of the lyrics. He just says other words that are stupid. Come on, Chicago! No, not even that. When he was doing Sweet Dreams, he just kept saying the word Twiggy over and over. Like he was talking to his bass player. Twiggy just kept saying Twiggy over and over again. And, like, he's not seeing it with any kind of... Listen, for all people say, and, and Louis J. Gomez, number one, busting my balls about corn, that I actually like corn, not just that I toured with them, that I'm yeah. a fan, is they sing the songs every night like it's the first time they sang them. They go out there and put on the show like they're 19 years old and give a shit about these songs still. He thinks these songs... He performs them like he thinks they're ridiculous. Am I right, Brian? Oh, yeah, it was... Did you see him there with the when he put on that fan sombrero? Yes. Yeah, he and doesn't. It was ridiculous. He's walking around. He's barely talking, just kind of catching his breath. He, but he, he but looks, he like lumbers around the stage now. It's not like a rock star slithering. Yeah. When he was beautiful. Oh, back when you wanted to bang him. Did you see him when he was younger, Brian? No, this was actually the first time I've watched him on YouTube, but nothing like it live. And I was, I was so sad. I was like, you know, this would be cool to see him live for the first time in my life. See, that's that good. That's a bummer. Yeah, it's a real bummer. Wow, well, Brian. We'll get him next time, killer. Yep. We gotta hey, find a new, new year. Thank you so much, man. Crackle, crackle, dude. Christine, pr pot that up right there. Now there's corn. Makes me want to. Makes me want a half pipe on rollerblades. But look at him giving a shit. Oh, I'm going August 30th. Yeah. Uh, zombie and uh, corn. Yeah. Now zombie, I can get behind. That's Return, to, live, got return to Living Dreads too. Zombie still performs there. Although he puts on a he puts on a bigger show than he performs. He doesn't sing his songs awesome live, but he performs like nobody else. Because but Manson, he so you're just done. What I'm if he's done. in his car? What if he's in his rental car and he turns on serious and he hears this? Manson, Marilyn. lose weight. Marilyn, double M. Marilyn, Brian, <laughs> Brian Warner. Um, yeah, dude, it's a fucking it's. It's the saddest thing, dude. You get it? I get it. Iggy Pop still looks like Iggy Pop. Dude, Iggy Pop sells the... F I mean, he. I went and saw him when they were on the post-pop depression tour, and he was fucking crowd surfing. Shirt was off within the first two songs. Mm -hmm. He did, Yeah. It was great. Lust for life. And his body's like fine enough to work that work still. He, I mean, was he 70 and he's got a better body than I do at 33? No shit. And that's kind of what we, were, we watched that beginning of uh, the end. The Molly Crew thing. Molly Crew thing. And Nikki Six. Amazing. Timeless. Tommy Lee. Still looking great. Gorgeous. Mick Mars, who I believe, if my information is correct, uh, correct, 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 <laughs> that was stupid. If my uh, information is correct, I believe Mick Mars is 10 years um like older than everybody else. He was the oldest in the group. Which is kind of weird when you think about their beginning. So he literally looks like a, like a skeleton, like a dying man playing this music, but he still plays great. And the thing is, he's always been ugly and kind of looked like that, so it, it doesn't, it fits him still. Uh, Vince Neil is just ridiculous. Yeah. He's wearing, I saw him. he's wearing tiny, uh, short little bell bottoms, and his, uh, and his face is so like, uh, just big and like puffy. It's plasticky. Still sings it though. Oh, we got a facelift on VH1, which was the cell that you're like, that's not rock and roll, dude. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I waited on him, and it was just one of those faces where you look at it and you're like, this is so weird up close. <laughs> oh yeah, and he was just getting hammered off some Trace Rios. Yeah, oh, dude, and I his told face that story just looked all weird and, uh, and puffy, right? Yeah, and then his manager was like, "Hey, listen, Vince wants another one. If you could bring him another margarita, that'd be great." I'm like, "Yeah, dude, uh, I'm f my section is filling up." I'm a little busy right now. I just got double sad. I don't know if you know what that means, but get the fuck out of my place. This ain't 88, bro. <laughs> hey, bro, this ain't 88, and I ain't my mom. I'd be excited to meet Vince Neil. I'd be excited to meet Marilyn Manson. Still, I would. I'm just saying, like, look, any rock star who I'm I'm impressed already if I like songs by them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But just as a performer, don't not give a fuck. There's no performance I do, really, that I stamp my name on, at least, that I don't give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, where, where, yeah, you yeah. where you take for granted, like, yeah. fuck, the, you know, it's like, oh, it's a Sunday night show. Who gives a shit? Like, it's uh, always like, no, I want I yeah. to do well. Like, you know? Well, I think comedians want to do well every time because it's more of a reaction-based thing. I think music, you can just fucking... I mean, that's like... When, when we talk to musicians about having bad shows, mm 
Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that the, the benefit of being a musician is when you have a bad show, you can just play your music. And even if there's seven people there, you're like, I'm just playing my song. There's that's a crutch. A, yeah. yeah like, 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 you need people and you need reaction and comedy. Yeah. For so sure. that's, but also that's the, the, that's the tail end. That's where, where they get, if they get big, they can just walk through their songs and play the hits. People are still going to be going nuts. You can't walk through your old jokes. No. No. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, I got a single mom. And blah, 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 yeah. Blah, you got to still deliver blah, them with a thing. And that's what happens when you, that's always the answer too when a comedian goes like I used to have this joke man it was, it was killing and killing for like months and then all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore it's like oh you're telling it with no more of that excitement that you told it with yeah you're telling it with the mathematical formula that you know it is where you're like you might as well be up there be like two times two times two is eight yeah cr- uh, thank you um, guys this next one's pretty good <laughs> 33 divided by three is 11 uh, Christine was typed us a message, even though she, she could have just probably said there's a microphone in front of your face, but you're right. Uh, she said, Smashing Pumpkins is the worst live show. Is it that bad? Because I don't, be ashamed I, of I don't think they, I don't think they ever have performed well, because I saw them sort of at their height. Siamese Dream Tour? Uh, no, the, the one with, um... What's that? Melancholia. Melancholia, infinite infinite. sadness. Okay, if we're gonna start shitting on the pump, let's do it accurately. Yeah, I saw. I saw him. I saw him on that tour, and uh, it was bad. It was pretty. But he, he, they speed through their so they play them. The world is a vampire. No, the problem is he goes. He goes. He goes. The world is a vampire. Do 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 do. He, he fucking speeds through it all. He doesn't seem to like the audience very much. And uh, he's a big wrestling fan. And uh, so that you're back on his team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He likes wrestling. Yeah, and I, and he I likes like things. Ni- I like things. And I like 1979. He likes t-shirts. I like t-shirts. T-shirts are cool. These are just so cool. Um, yeah, dude. I think he. Uh, they couldn't give a shit. No. The Smashing Pumpkins. Like it's really yeah. There's, there's just a cash grab. Yeah, I came home it's and put on the album to remember why I love them so much. It was that bad? It really was. He, he seems like he hates his fans. Like, he's almost, like, against his fans <laughs> I, for being his fans. It's funny you say that, though, and then you go to a Smashing Pumpkin concert, and it's like, he finishes, like, uh, you know, one of the songs, like, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you for being here! Seriously, I hate you! I know I'm just saying this. I'm going to do that on a song that you guys like, but honestly, Cherub Rock's coming up. Also, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah. If you like this, if you like this music, you're morons. He really is like he's like, what are you guys all smoking pot? I remember, yeah, whatever. Go fuck yourself. Uh, oh yeah, you guys clapping for that? We, oh, I knew that was gonna happen. I think we just lost a call that when we come back from our first break, our first break of the new season. Season uh, two. Nikki, Nikki said her husband gave her a hall pass. She's trying to uh, wants our advice on uh, what what kind of fuck. I wanted to talk, take that call so bad, Nikki. If you're listening, well, please call back. We'll take you after the thing. I'll tell you, Nikki, who Jay's not gonna recommend. Marilyn Manson, because he's unfuckable in Jay's eyes. Oh, totally unfuck. I wouldn't fuck him at all. Not even su- I would have sucked him off so good ten years ago, twenty years ago. Ah, uh, Dad. Hey, oh my God, are you about to come? Are you about to come? Are you gonna come? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, raining on my face. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we go to break, why don't we take this? Do you want some inspiring words? Do you want to know? We're being a little negative today. Sure. Do you want to hear the positivity of the bonfire? What's the positivity? Dugan. Dugan in California. I'm the only person who yeah, can see the... Man. Hey, doing, Dugan? I'm the only person that can oh, see man. the call screen here, so why don't you tell Soda why you're calling? Tell him about well, the heroes that we are. You guys are my fucking heroes, dude. I've been watching both you guys for, well, Big J for a long time, and Dan more recently got to see both your guys' specials online. Excellent job to both you guys. Thank you, sir. Uh, I had I had a quick question uh, for uh, for Jacob. He's oh, not Jacob's in not here today. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, but wow. we can answer okay. it as Jacob. <laughs> did did he probably get some of that sweet, sweet pussy? What's your question? Get that sweet, sweet pussy. Go ahead, Dugan. What's your what's your question? Uh, no, but they did provide me with a woman made of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I had sexual relations with her. <laughs> Thank God it was Swiss. Huh? Get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good. I one. just want to say, I just want to say, thank you guys. Oh, thanks, dude. Uh, I want to. I, go- uh, I got diagnosed with cancer two years ago, and uh, as of February this year, I've been in the clear. But uh, every time, yes, I come, uh, yeah, dude, no shit, right? 
Um, uh, every time I would come out of my fucking chemo sessions, the bonfire would be on. Thank God. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, that was me. I called for that timing. Yeah. I said, uh, chemo usually wraps up about 6 p.m., so if we could throw it on around then. Guys, I've been doing a little research. Turns out all chemo centers let out around the same time. <laughs> like a cattle of chemo yeah. patients? A cattle herd of chemo patients come walking yeah, it's, out? It's like, Sad. Ah. Guys, it's like uh, it's like drive time radio, but with uh, you know, with like cancer. Everyone's making nausea noises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Dude, so cancer free since long February. Long cancer free since February. Dude. Oh, that's fucking. That's great. awesome, Dugan. Thanks, man. And thanks Thank for listening. I was gonna go full Billy Corrigan on you, but then finding out that uh, you know you listened to us going through a horrific thing like that. Thanks, man. Hey, hey, hey the the Billy Corrigan shit. That's fucking. Not cool at all. He's a dick. <laughs> yeah, what a jag off, right? Yeah, no shit. That guy's never helped anybody get through anything. Yeah, Billy. Yeah. You just bum people out. Backstage passes. Thank God you didn't go to a smashing movie. Was, Anybody else who got cancer? Good. I this hope next it, one's Ava Adore. I, I hope it spreads. Here's 1979. <laughs> oh, my God, Billy. I hope, it, I hope it gets into your bones so you can't take it out. We must never be apart. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck you, cancer people. <laughs> uh, Dugan, thanks so much for calling in, man. Dugan, I'm fucking so happy to hear you're doing well, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Crackle, crackle. Crackle, crackle. Man. Crackle, crackle, dude. We are the show that heals everyone. It is the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, yeah. We're back. Uh-huh. We're back. It's the Bonfire. Comedy Center Radio, Sirius XM 95. Big Jokers and Dan Soder. We're yeah. back. We were, you missed us. Follow us, at, follow us at the Bonfire, SXM on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also Snapchat. Big J. Okerson It's going to be a Helium Comedy Club in his hometown of Philadelphia. And let's fill him up Thursday to Sunday. Thursday, August 11th through Sunday, August 14th. You can get tickets at BigJComedy.com. And then weekend. you can also go get his special live at Webster Hall on iTunes and, and other places. While you're there, go grab Dan Soder's special, Not Special, which is still available and kicking ass. Double and up. also this weekend, Friday and Saturday, 12th and 13th, they will be at the Tempe Improv in Tempe, Arizona. <laughs> um, we're just talking, we were talking some Molly Crew, so I thought we'd... Play a welcome back song from the old Dude, crew. Yeah, we were watching that documentary about their last concert. <laughs> Nikki Six still looks so good. I bet that guy crushes ass still. Yeah. We know Tommy Lee does. Tommy Lee, I mean, they all do because they're Molly Crew, and there's always going to be some woman that's like, you know, like a house mom that wanted to fuck him 20 years ago that's like, I'll give it a go right now. Pam Anderson's the only one who bummed me out as, uh, as much as Marilyn Manson. And. Not her fault. She's doing everything she can. She's just getting older. She's still a beautiful woman, but I mean, like, it only takes a couple clicks in a computer to remind yourself, like, that she was, at one time, the most amazing-looking human being on the but, planet. But don't you think you can age with her and find sure. something to like in her looks? No, of course. Yes, I do. I think she's still beautiful. It's just like, oh, shit, like, age is smacking everyone. Yeah, he's just smacking us, though. Every if day, I'm showing bro. age, she has to show age. She was an adult when I was a child. A child? But when she was at her best, man, was she at her best. You know what's funny is, like, I see all these, like, um... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we, we're going down a hole now. Yeah, we're now we're getting in a rabbit hole, payment. Oh, fucking Christ on the cross. <laughs> you are going nuts. Oh, that's not so bad, but that... I mean, go to... She you know, looks great in every photo. It's so, yeah, but she just, looks amazing. She's just in not every photo. twenty. Jay really, when girls go from young face to old face, he's like done. Like I probably have got like seven years. I think you know seven years. She thinks think, she has. I think I can, I think I can last about, But he really like once they hit that old face, he's just like nope. <laughs> 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 you got the end of the first Trump administration. <laughs> Holy shit! Seven years. Uh, I for me when the when a gr girl gets like older woman face, kind of fucking kicks it into another gear, different gear, different gear. But you know what? Same appreciation, <laughs> no, listen, same engine. Dude, if there wouldn't be two seconds of thought 
You're shaming her. You're from age her, shaming. From her telling me, uh, let's fuck. Oh, to, I mean, wow. Dude, so her. That is crazy. So her. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That you know, but you're always crazy. you're always a little picture evidence away from swing, singing my tune. Oh, dude, I am the most influential. Oh wait, I'm not influential. I can't influence. Influenced. You're easily influenced. I'm easily influenced. Look at that son. Look at her face. That's just stupid. <laughs> I mean, she's she, mad beautiful and shit. She is so hot. And I'm just, Yo, she be mad beautiful and shit. I mean, like before the fucking ah, tool what? time. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's when I went to go see her at the Philadelphia Car Show from Tool Time, and just like as an, a, a 13 year old boy, oh. yeah, Labatt's blue. That's what uh, she got discovered. Dude, she just looked like that and got discovered in the stands of a football game, a Canadian football game. Yes, that's not. That's less people. Oh man, her face was unreal. Yeah, so uh, I saw you from uh, from over there. And when she got out of Canada, uh, they they got rid of that stupid poof hair she had. Yeah, oh. that's it. They strained her hair, and she was perfect. <laughs> and just like that, pure perfection. Now look at her. Grizzly witch. <laughs> you boys are going to get into my oven. Who's been going oh. through my book of spells? I thought I saw her look again. Yes, she's beautiful. I'd there. fuck her. Of course you would. But, dude, she was young. I think she's gorgeous inside oh, and out. You're just lying. To I don't think everyone. she does disgusting things like Marilyn Manson and tells lies on stage. Oh no, but I bet she takes a meaner shit now, though. I know she takes a shit sometimes. It's she's like a meaner. So like that's Dream Girl. Yeah, and that's just her. That's her that's stupid like, Canadian bangs. Still, I love them. I love Canadian bangs. <laughs> I love them all. I'll suck your cock, eh? Yeah. Hey, you want to go around the corner? Oh, the young. The you want to go behind the Tim Hortons? She was just like, do you know how many just local yokel dudes just plop dork in her? Just got a chance to do that. <laughs> just one guy, just Steve down at the fucking at the ski do shop. <laughs> you know what? We, I put belts on the snowmobiles, and my girlfriend Pamela's <laughs> gonna be a model. I um. Oh, you know what? Guess who's back? Guess, Guess who's, who's back? Zach. Please tell me Joe from Long Island. No, no. Joe from Long Island just ditched down on us. She, we pissed her off. I don't remember what we did exactly. You know what's so funny about that? We say that, but then I imagine it just cuts to a car overturned and a wheel spinning. Yeah. <laughs> She's just been dead for a year. <laughs> She's still running the car. It was a hybrid. Yeah. Um, Nikki in Madison is calling back. This is the hall pass caller. I was yeah, saying about you. I hall met pass. Nikki. Did you? Yeah, she came out to the comedy on state. Super hot. Yeah, she's cute. She's really cute. Oh, that's a good backpedal. That's a real nice way to say no. Nikki, I met you at Madison, right? Yes, we sure did. We talked. Yeah, she's yeah, she's very cute. Oh, okay, thank you. She sounds adorable. Real she's cute. Married woman, though. Yeah, married woman. Yeah, you're very cute. I just want to be respectful of the oath you took in front of God. Can you send? A, I don't know what she looks like. Can you send a picture to us? Nothing uh, mean. Yeah, I will. Nothing dirty. It's that, uh, the bond. What is it? What's her? The bonfire at SiriusXM dot com. The bonfire at SiriusXM dot com. I just want to know who I'm talking to here. Yeah, she's very cute. Her husband's was very nice because she's saying her, her question is she has a hall pass and she wants our advice on what guy to go with. I want to see what she looks like to know what's up. I want to go with this is this is the deal. So my husband and I have been married for about eight years. And I love him. He's the love of my life. He's my best friend. And he's great. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of, we're comfortable enough in our relationship that we're kind of wanting to explore other avenues and just to have fun. And there's this guy who is 25 and I'm 38. Yeah! And I'm already on board. <laughs> Team Soda is go! Wee! <laughs> Weep, weep. <laughs> Fire the missiles! Fire torpedoes! Soder's boning up. Yeah. My pants are just off. I'd love to make Soder bone up, but, you know. Um, oh, yeah. No, I heard that. I, I heard that no at the end. <laughs> I love to have Soder bone up, you know? <laughs> but the thing is, it's okay. So he's, he knew that I, he knows I'm married and everything, and he's, like I said, he's 25. So he's still kind of young. And I kind of straight out said, hey, look, because um, he's kind of a shy guy, said, you know, when I was younger, I had a guy who was a little bit older than me, just kind of, 
you know, when you're younger and you're still exploring, you have a guy that or a person that kind of statutory rape you, friend, <laughs> kind of like your instructor. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, fuck sensei, sex sensei. Yes, yes. So I kind of gave him that proposition. He went back and forth on it. Um, you are going to be this young. You're going to be this young man's sexual sensei. Is he a dweeby guy? Yeah. Twenty five? Because some twenty five year olds might know what they're doing already. Probably not. No, he's very. He's just very into sport, and it's like that's where his focus is. It's but bad for his focuses. About, what sport does he play? All about the hang. Um. Oh, what what a sports? Diver, it, it, what? He's a diver and a swimmer. Oh, Ooh. so he's hairless. Ooh, like a powerful he's seal. You better get your hands on him before Trish the dish comes over and starts oh, sucking him off in a locker room. I don't know if you know about my mom's history, but she'll take down anything <laughs> oh. from the 65 and over and under category. Oh, man, she likes a nice over 30 swim. Would you do the four by one? You might be in trouble. The strangest thing is I've never, ever wanted to do anything outside my marriage before I met this guy. I don't know what it is. He did. He wasn't overly flirtatious. He's just got this shy streak. But anyhow, kind of laid out there and said, hey, my husband's completely okay with it. You know, I, I'd like to see, well, you know, I'd like to kind of hang out, you know, and stuff. And he kind of declines, but then he'll text me, and, hey, what's going on? And then he'll, you know, whatever. So, like, last week I sent him a somewhat mild, I'm sure, for Jay's taste, but I sent him somewhat of a dirty... Which means cat it's cat very for erotic for my taste. <laughs> are, there, are there nips showing? Yeah. That's good, picture. That's good. <laughs> I wish... But honestly, I wish there was a video did. element so week so Nikki could see how dead-eyed you asked that question. You were just like, are there, are there nips involved? If there's nips in it. That's a good picture. That's a good enough picture for a first picture? For a married woman send you a picture saying, let's fuck? And this is a Snapchat. Snapchat. Okay. And he didn't really respond. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh. I guess, I don't know if he's, I just don't know if he's leery about the situation. He said a couple of times that it would be different if I wasn't married and stuff like that. But if a guy, he, I guess I'm wondering if when you guys were younger mm -hmm. and someone said, hey, let me help you get over some of your insecurities, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like I don't want to go on. I don't want to go on Tinder. I don't want to go on finding something on Craigslist. That's just kind of creepy. I was never the dominant person mm -hmm. ever, and I just would like to show this person. I just like to teach him. And I lost my virginity okay. to a girl who that that was kind of her take on. She ended up liking me though, but uh, she uh, she approached it with a very like, "I'll show you." I had one of those. What's up? I had two of those. That's why I lost my virginity to though. So it was like a walk-through tutorial mine was, was, fuck. mine was when I was living in Tucson. Yeah. Our first bang was that. Was a uh, was like a, girls, like, when you do this, yeah. maybe this would happen. Which is always the first thing they say is slow down. Do you like, <laughs> yeah. Do you like when this is a thing that happens sometimes? Yeah. So wait, he's... So just so I, I'm caught up, Nikki, he doesn't want to do it because you're married? That's what I hear. That's what I'm gathering from him. Well, you know, if, if you're asking for any kind of advice here too, Nikki, I'd say if you're 38, 25, and you get and you have a hall pass that this may be the only one. Look, because you know, your husband may not like this after it happens. Yeah, I say go for this because one. you guys aren't even doing like uh, right, he's there. Like he's there. You're saying you can go off and do your own thing. That's a that's a that's a level jump before the old. And we're all in the same room. Yeah, well, I and I and I appreciate that, but the problem is, is I don't. I feel like I'm getting kind of creepy at this point because I'm trying to get this guy to change his mind. Because I only feel comfortable doing it with him, I think, because he is younger yeah. and he is shy. And, and now your mind is blown. Him. You threw pussy at a guy who went no. Nah. Exactly, exactly, right. And I'm like, I never had anyone. And but the more he's aloof to it, the more I want to. But, you know, the more you're told no about something, you want it more. That's he's blowing your mind. But yeah. now is your husband going to get pissed off that you're dedicating so much time and emotion into changing this guy's mind? Because he, he probably just wanted you to go, like, yeah, pick a dude, tell him you'll fuck him, fuck him 15 minutes later after that, and then come home and shut up about it? Or is he going, like... <laughs> what a great way to just be, like, get over something like that. You're like, all right, pick a dick, any dick, take the dick like you're doing a card trick. Now shut up right, about it. Now it's a dick, now don't tell me your card. <laughs> now shut up and don't tell me your card. <laughs> or, does he, or does he like that you're, like, engaging with some... Uh... I just imagine him on the couch, like, can I read the text? 
<laughs> what did he text you? What are you showing me, uh, Hey, see, you show, Did we get a picture? No, I just wanted to get it off the screen. I'm, I'm on my phone. I can't send one right now. Oh. But I'm, I'm, I was sitting there talking. I told my husband about everything, and I was kind of trying to work something over the 4th of July weekend because we had a long weekend coming up. And my husband kept on asking me, he's like, so are you, do you have a date? And I'm like, I don't know. And so, and it kind of, he admitted it kind of actually excited him about it. But I think he doesn't know I sent the Snapchat picture. Wow. Although I don't know if he'd be good or not with that. But I, I mean, at this point, it's kind of here nor, neither here nor there if he's not responding. So. How is he not responding? I don't know. That's what I'm wondering. I'm, go shake I'm curious about the, and just so you know, uh, Nikki, uh, Cody in Oklahoma just wants us to tell you that the dude you want to bang is gay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's true. It's just, that's, that's Cody in Oklahoma. We'll just say Cody, Cody and OK saying you're, uh, you're chasing a queen. He doesn't even want to get on the air. He just wanted to let us know that the dude she wants to bang is gay. That's kind of what I wondered, too. And I asked him that at some point. He's like, no. He's like, I just. I have other things. Uh, so it's so funny watching a girl have to process a guy saying no that it has to be something that extreme. That is like the funniest, just, that's the funniest like douchebag line where you know it's like it's like I asked a girl if she wanted to fuck. She said no. She was probably a lesbo. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> never mind, Dyko. I didn't fucking see your <laughs> rainbow tattoo. But I also imagine her being like, you know, I'd really. My husband says it's okay if we have sex, and so you can come over and have sex. And he goes, <laughs> you don't understand, Nikki. I'm in love with the water. <laughs> what I, it's like Troy McClure the, the Simpsons. <laughs> I'm married to the sea. I'm married to I'm married to fifty laps a morning. And that's shaving my body down. That's the only bitch I listen to. The only bitch I listen to is time shaving. <laughs> um part of me wonders if I haven't defended him. You well, know, but no, well, you, you well you're you're he's gay. You're sitting here yeah. yourself even wondering though if you're wondering if your husband's annoyed with you devoting so much time and you're not he doesn't even know how much time you are devoting to it, even in your thoughts. I wonder if it's getting out of hand. Just just okay. either you know what? I'd I say, say shut I, it down unless he responds. Yeah, I'd go here's the thing, I would just go off of him, like take your hall pass and use it in the most exact way, like Forget to even Tinder. Like, go on fucking Craigslist or something and just get a guy that wants to fuck and just meet up and fuck. I like that. Roll it. Roll it. Though. Explain, yeah. the whole, explain the whole situation to him. You could pick, uh, if you put a, an ad up, you'll get seven zillion responses. Yeah, well. You Nick, pick a guy that's uh, decent looking and, you know, big old donkey dick and then go meet at a hotel. Tell him that, you know, your situation, you're married, you have a whole thing. But I think Nikki's trying to say that she actually likes, she wants to do it with someone that she actually has somewhat of a connection with. That this is not some stranger that's just going to dick her out and then lead her at a mo roadside motel. If she's she's just, not that connected to this. 25 I think she is though I think she genuinely likes him in a weird you know like she wants to in like a this sounds fucked up but like in like kind of like a sexually motherly way where she like, I don't I don't know how to say it without making it weird what are you saying Nikki I do want I do want him I do want to teach him so I want him to get something out of it more Nikki just that. cares uh, about teaching <laughs> she loves to teach she's a born teacher that's what I, it is. You know what you need to do is you need to, Nikki, you need to wear a leather jacket, walk into a steamy room, and turn a chair around and sit on it backwards like Michelle Pfeiffer in the Gangster's but Paradise video. Don't you want your hall pass to be good? This guy's clearly, if he does it with your teaching thing, you're expecting, if you got to teach, it's because you're catching some weak D. That's what I was wondering, too. I would just find some... Well, like, you guys bring up a lot of great points. I'd say find an and experienced black dude, huge mule... And let this guy just rock your shit in a motel. And I would say, find someone that you have great conversation with, that you want to read a book with. I don't know why you'd read a book think, with someone. But think about why you're wrong there, Soder. I'm wrong on everything. I No, I, it, because I'm saying it make it savages. Savage animal. Savage animal. No, because this thing, I, I unless this is a whole setup of your husband just going like... He's going to murder him. Here's my two thoughts. Your husband, who I have no problems with, I would like you to know, your husband is... Uh, if he's not going for a hall pass too, does he get one also? He was trying the whole Tinder thing, but he found it really awkward to start a conversation. And he's like, I, I, he was up. I think the thing that I like about this guy is, can he run? He kind his personality kind of right, reminded me of my husband when I first met him. He was just shy and awkward and stuff. And my, I'm my more wondering if your if, if your husband is cheating on you. That's why it's like you could have a hall pass if you want. By the way, he's all yeah. Why it. don't you uh, why don't you take that hall pass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, oh, why don't you go fuck that nerd kid who's afraid of pussy? <laughs> yeah, why don't you go? For, why don't you go? <laughs> why don't you go fuck that water queen? <laughs> 
Um, oh, well, there's a guy in Kentucky here that says, you sound hot, and he would totally bang. You want to see if you guys <laughs> really? have a, you want to see if you have a con- connection with, oh, with Thomas from Kentucky? Someone with a penis thinks no. she's hot? Thomas. This is, this is the thing. My husband, my husband, it's so, he loves me so much, and he finds me so attractive. I don't have to do anything to turn him off. So I think that the, the thing that is... Ah, I think you're full of shit on that one. I think. Yeah, Nick, you're probably wrong about that. Like, you probably should do... Like, it, it only takes about three days before I look at Christine and go, if you put on those fucking sweatpants again, I'm going to kick you right in the snatch. Like, you know what I mean? You got to... <laughs> not everything turns us on after all. You got to... Yeah. But put the work in. So he might be getting turned on that you're trying to turn this dude on. Yes. There's so many psychological levels of why this could be happening, but the case remains you are chasing a possible homosexual. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Offer him butt only. Butt only. And tell him you'll crop your hair up and put it under a baseball cap. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's, yeah, that's... I'm kidding. I don't want you to go full yeah. top gun. I mean, if you're going to teach him, why don't you be the best teacher and take it in the shitter for this guy? I mean, that's just... Well, I don't do that shit. So At all? Just, oh, it's so, it hurts so bad. Mm, well, those Wisconsin donkey dicks, that's what's going on. Those corn-fed motherfuckers out there. Just yeah, beasting. It's like taking in a hag. Well, I think you. Uh, I but, think if you don't get a response from this guy, just move on. Yeah, give it a shot with somebody yeah, else. I think I'm just gonna. And I wonder if it's the universe, not so much God, but the universe telling me that opening up my marriage is kind of a double-edged sword. Something well, I, happened. I mean, I think that's that's not the universe nor God. I think that's probably just like yeah, because it's a relationship. You're gonna, it's going to get sticky. You know? Yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, it, you and it. but you and Christine do it because you guys are both on the same page. I'm so happy you brought that up. Yeah. Honey, and you guys do it together, so I guess that's different too. Yeah. Well, good luck. We Nikki. do do it together. That is absolutely true, and that is it. But you don't like girls, I assume. No. Yes. Eh, not really. Yeah. I like them to look at, but I can't imagine playing with them. Well, you know? they they taste sweet and they're softer to touch so more for me Nikki <laughs> yeah, just, there you go Dan I'll give you all my slappy seconds yes you? That's, oh, they did turn me on <laughs> I don't know why but that just did I turn. enjoyed that oh, well, would, you, would you have any interest do you, would you want to watch him with another woman see that's where we kind of have talked about that even just being in the same room and you know same house in different rooms I, I don't even know. I don't Maybe know. Maybe dial it back but. before you start trying to fuck this uh, autistic gardener kid. <laughs> And uh, maybe try a couple swap first if I can make a recommendation. Fun! One maybe for you, one for me! An attractive couple, you do it in the same room, and you do a couple swap. And then, the, and then what an you do is... an easy transition. At the end, you give each other I mean, recipes. In the same room, though, isn't there a sense of, some, some sense of performance anxiety? Like, if what if Christine makes the noise of ex- or some... The pleasure noise with this other with another dude that she's never made with you. I assume true. that would happen. I that's almost the reason I'd be letting her do it. I'm like, you gotta find, <laughs> go find where that noise happens. <laughs> um, that happened to me in the most dude that, when me and my ex girlfriend Cheryl years ago. Yeah, we did a couple swap with a couple where the guy was older than all of us, not by a lot. Yeah, but he was like in his early twenties and we were all young and he was giving the whole like spiel about like you know it's just beautiful thing you know Everybody's guys boring. naked bodies it's yeah just it was, carnal love he had he had a, he had a carpeted van the whole thing and yeah. he really did that and he gave the speech and uh we were like hook line and sinker i was so excited to fuck his chick his chick was not it she did not like fucking me yeah it was bothering her that he was fucking my chick and my chick was i mean scratching the <laughs> fucking ceiling with, with happiness and right before right before we all right before that's we like swap hold on that's like when your dog gets more excited to see another person you're like I'm your owner why don't you like me more and the dog's like he loses his shit every time Joey comes over why well, I scratch you better than that well what's so funny about it is while we were what, what happened first we, we hooked yeah. up we both hooked up with our own chicks at okay. first and uh, I fucked my chick for a couple of seconds, and she was a she. She came pretty easy, yeah, which was great about her. I did like that. She was like, uh, so she came, or she was just coming quick to get the other guy. He's like, mm, I'm done. No, All no, right. no, 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 no. <laughs> she was the most apprehensive of the whole group, but I was okay. giving a lot of encouragement because I wanted to fuck this other chick. Yeah, and not really over processing that she was going to be fucking this guy. I knew it was happening, but you're just kind of like, eh, hey, 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 it's over there. <laughs> like you know, I'll be over here. <laughs> it's like taxes. And we, like, fin- I, we I get to him. April we finish day. fucking, and the girl go, and uh, the girl, my girlfriend goes. Uh, she goes, I don't think I want to do this. I think I want to leave. And I was like, Cheryl, we're already here. That's Mike. Like, we're already here. And then she was like, all right. And then, but she was way in. And then I got like, I did the, the, 
I was getting teary eyed, so I had to like fake more angry to make those like tears of anger instead of just being sad. What? Driving home, I was like, just you just said a couple things about it, it made me so angry. Oh, shit, that just broke my heart. Really? I yeah. thought you'd laugh at it more. I mean, I am laughing at it because that guy dicked your girl down better than you did. Oh, you were a good, mean, a uh, couple years older dick and yeah. a confident guy. What did you guys have AM, AM talk radio on when you're driving home? And like, man, the slink for Philadelphia should be. And you go, they fucked you too well. Yeah, he, exactly. You can't listen to Keith Sweat or anything fucking R&B for like four months. Yeah, he was 20-something as confident when I was like a, a fat 19-year-old. Oh, was, yeah. Was banging. All he said was his girlfriend's go. His girlfriend is taking one for the team, so... Like, so he could bang my super oh, cute girlfriend. Poor, I'm poor young Jay, but yeah. Ah, no big deal. My, my point being is I already uh, had that experience of the, you know, that fucking word. It's like, you know, she's making the noises too much in the same room. Yeah, like that, Nikki, no, that that was, that's the reason. Was. I think that's the one reason I would never do it, is that would shatter me psychologically if the girl's like, oh, God. Yes, I have been waiting for this for years. Oh my God, you've awoken pleasure inside my body that I did not know existed. My cum is thicker than that of a Louisiana swamp. I'll never go back to a different dick. Come on. Hey, 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 baby. Hi. Wait, do you like this at all? Should I try a different position? But I'm on the side of the bed. Just like, hey, hey, it's me. Hey, so it seems like you're really enjoying this. <laughs> Hey, this, you having fun with this guy? Hey, I'm going to go back to mine. I don't know if you heard me over there, but I'm killing it. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, like, you know, just just pipe down a little bit because hey, you really... Uh, why don't you do the thing that you usually do with me where you just breathe really heavily out your nose? <laughs> uh, it seems like you're getting very vocal here. I don't really hear that a lot. You know, I think when, before we start and you turn the digital clock so you can see it? Yeah. You know when you go and go like I'm in a downhill <laughs> slalom? I didn't hear them do that with him, so I just, I don't know, just check and make sure you're all right, but you sound like you were yelling pretty hard. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go back over there. <laughs> you're having fun, right? You're having fun? Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <coughs> What's the problem with having water? Oh, dude, we have a... I'm dying inside. Well, that's going to lead us to a story that I want to talk about, that you didn't tell me the full story. Yeah. Yeah. And he's giving me the Jacob break sign. Oh. Jacob's not here to do it, so Merkface Hasty has to step in. We got to do it. It's All time right. for a jaw break, we'll as we it. say on the Larry on Larry the Cable Guy show. How long is the break, Lou? I want to count the minutes. Uh, it's a long one. Six minutes. Oh, Holy shit. Oh, get it. Get it out. Not enough to smoke a cigarette, but too long to just sit around comfortably. It's the bonfire. This is Rob Corddry, and you're listening to The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, yeah, play that leg guitar here on The Bonfire. Big J Okerson, Dan Soder, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. There's so much room for that movie. My goddamn microphone's not on. Holy shit, Lou. Oh, Lou, I swear to God, if this was the 80s, I'd put a lit cigarette out on you. <laughs> I'd show you. I mean, business, you son of a bitch. I was Sorry. on You'll MTV take... 2's Guy Court. Do you not take this job seriously? Do you not take this job seriously? We got a new studio, and you are fucking it up. <laughs> I'm sorry. What did I miss? What were you saying? I don't know, but look at all this room. There's so much room for activities. <laughs> Boys are back at tag. Yeah, working out. Oh, hold on. Let me do that again. <laughs> There's so much room for activities. Oh, this is great. Oh, this really is great. We do the kid and play dance at one point. Oh, man. We're going to have to do that. We're going to have to do it. Um, I could take a dump right on the floor and leave it for entertainment weekly. <laughs> Before we went to break... We were uh, talking. It's funny, I guess. Uh, our threesomes are in, bro. Threesomes are in this season. Threesomes are in. Me and Christine uh, jumped on that uh, Thrinder. It's called something else now. I don't know if we should give him a free plug. Yeah, you should. Nothing's happened. Nothing's happened yet. So I'm oh, there's a, a Tinder for threesomes. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, so if I put myself on there, there's just two girls, just two hot girls. Like, <laughs> let's just find some dick. There's a lot of hot ones, but we only got one response, and I said she uh, showed up just like not to like fuck or anything. She's just like you know come watch a show or something, and she was uh okay. she was a little yauchy, yeah, a little yauchy. I she don't think some, I ever want to be described good, physically as yauchy. She had some good pictures. She had some good pictures, but, but uh, yeah. now uh, the pictures were worlds. They were worlds good, but from the pictures, I was like, first of all, it's all face. I was like, this girl's going to be huge. Yeah. Not big. Huge. 
Huge. There's a big problem. If, if all your pictures Huge. are face pictures, you're not comfortable with your body. Oh, look who's fat sharing now all of a sudden. God, yes. shit. You guys are just trying to find a hot piece of meat. I'm just saying Marilyn Manson's fat. Do. Christine's just beating up these girls. Just on this <laughs> blimp of a bitch. <laughs> um, we were in... Kansas City with the Glaze. Yeah. This all week. Right. And uh, the, the dogs. Glaze. Were the dogs there? <laughs> you guys like dogs? You guys like dogs? <laughs> Here's many, how it's how many, gonna uh, By the way, Craig Glazer does an impression of his brother doing like, and he always goes, uh, you got five minutes. You got five. <laughs> like, he like That's does so an impression funny. of it. Uh, Craig doing an impression of his brother. Oh, dude, but Craig was. Every bit of Craig I was hoping he was going to be. Christine, such- Christine woke up to go to morning radio and TV because she had to meet him. Not only that, but you guys had like, uh, I mean, you you got to hang out with Craig Glazer. Sarah McPants came Sarah McPants, McPants came out, which was a highlight for me. So cool to meet her. Yeah. Such a cool chick, man. And she brought uh, her dude, quote unquote. Nice. They're not They're not an official item yet, but spent two days out of town together. Like, it's... It's getting serious. That's I vacation think. sex. Um, I thought I'll be honest with you. Uh, very uh, mild uh, personality on that Sarah McPants. She came. I would have said almost that she didn't like me very much, but she you know, she she tweet. She goes, "We had the best time." I was, and I'm like, "Oh, so. yeah." She had a great tweet where she was like, "Jay made me cry, laugh twice." Yeah, and that was Christine so cool. Is the sweetest woman in the world. We took pictures, but like, I don't know. She, I felt she was wrong. I'm like, does she hate me? I feel like she hates me. Um, <clears throat> that's how every comedian feels. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm always five minutes away from every one of my friendships, someone being like, I don't like you. And I'm like, I knew that the whole time. I, I figured, dude, <laughs> I suck. I'm so bad to you. My mom, bad for each other. Yeah, my mom could be like, Dad, I've never liked you. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, that's why I do all the drugs that I do. We took a fantastic picture together that uh, Christine's going to send out. Hold on. Let me see. Hey. And that picture really shows you, Dan, if you want to take a look at me in real life here, that I do not change uh, my... I really, I really wash my clothes every week and then rewear them all over again. Yeah. Wash and then wear those clothes again. Oh, bro, I'm wearing the same clothes from yesterday, and I slept at home by myself at a very decent hour. Oh, that's weird. I don't do that. Oh, I'm just a, saying, like, but, like pretty solid like, tea, bro. Like this outfit got washed, and now I'm wearing it again. Yeah. That's, that's life. I mean, um, that's life. That's life. So one of the nights in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Me and Christine, uh, I met a girl into the Juggalos, young, uh, pretty black female. Okay. And uh, she, like, stays in touch, you know, just like, that's like a, not a fan is the wrong word, but just like, you know, yeah, I guess a fan. She watched me do comedy at the Gathering of the Juggalos, mm-hmm. of all places. Very weird to pick up a place to pick up a fan, but yeah, a loyal fan. But she was in. Yes, absolutely. And she's cool. And she lives in Kansas City. And we came down, and uh, Christine, like, hit her up, like, hey. You know, we're going to be in Kansas City, come to a show. She came to a show, and she came back with us one night Oh, to hook up. And this is, again, I always say my favorite element of all this stuff isn't even the sex. Is that Christine has to feel the feelings of dude, which is so great. Mm-hmm. Whether it be the rejection or the uh, they won't leave or the whatever the thing, that, you know what I mean? All yeah. the guy stuff. She has to feel all of those things, which is great. And it's so fun to watch. And here's when she got to feel pretty nice. This was funny. So let's just paint the picture as as PG as possible. Soder for vanilla soder. Yeah. And the soderites that are out there. Yeah, the Cinemax soders. Yeah. Keep they, it softcore, uh, bro. That's my that's my sexual catchphrase. Hey, bro, keep it softcore. I'm, uh, <laughs> I is that a real picture of Billy Corgan with those two cats? Dude, bro, back on brand. Yeah. We need to be back on topic here. We're talking threesomes. Hot fuck action to the max. That's pretty bonkers, though. Yeah. So I'm laying on my back. These kids are the future, Jack. She is orally servicing me. Sucking the D. Don't worry, Cinemax, you can say that kind of stuff. On all fours positioned. Blow job. <laughs> 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 Giving you what adults call a blow job. Christine is behind her, giving her hand manipulation. Also known as a finger fuck. You can say that on Cinemax, too. Out of nowhere, I don't know if Christine was uh, was swinging for the fences or not. Yeah. But at some point, you just hear... 
<laughs> no. The chick just farts on Christine. Right in my fucking face. Man. Right in your face. Right in my face. But never breaks, like, but never breaks. Would she start laughing as she was sucking your dick or sucking? Never, she didn't no. even acknowledge never it. Never breaks, be never breaks beach. And what's funny is Christine hangs in it for a second and then just like does like a spin knife off the bed just to get away from it. Now, I just happened to be in a position where I didn't catch it at all. And when she left, Christina came. I was like, I was like, she's like that girl farted right in my face. And I was like, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, what are you gonna do? You know, shit happens, man. And she goes, yeah, but it fucking really stunk. So that, she fucking laid like a, a burrito fart in her face. Dude, that's I love, the best ow. part of that. I just love, I just love the thought of you with your hands behind your head, just like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. And then she just, pfft, like, no. Dog. It was not. It, it was, was a a loud one, Christine. Oh, it was loud and smelly. It was the worst. Yeah, and then Christine, like makes, Christine makes the same face you make when you open an oven and it's too hot. You're like, yeah. oh. I said if Jay had smelled Ooh. it, it would have totally taken him out of it. <clears throat> oh yeah. It kind of. I was a little like finish it up after that. It was rough. Oh yeah. It was it was ready to be over for Christine. That was great. Maybe that was like an ink. Maybe that's like how squids ink. She farts to get out of the threesome. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it does. No, she, was probably, she was definitely in. She came back the next night. Mercifully, Christine got her period, so she didn't have to go for a round two of a nose hair syndrome. <laughs> oh, she's like, by the way. I've been eating hot sauce all day. I just kept bringing up my period. I was like, oh, I started my period. I really want chocolate from the grocery store. She's like, I want chocolate, too. <laughs> I want chocolate, too. Ooh, child. I just, I just love her always just randomly leaning over and cracking ass. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah? You had your period? She also oddly... I was smoking about... Five months ago. Well, you know, I live in Kansas City, but I actually come to Overland, Overland Park. About <laughs> <laughs> this club's good. I liked it better when it was back in the yeah, Legends Mall. Oh, did you ever go to Dave and Buster's? Oh, they got this shrimp scampet. <laughs> oh, I'll give a public shout out, by the way, for Kansas City. Jack Stack Barbecue. Holy shit. Best barbecue I've ever had in my life. Ever in your life. Yep. Dude, I ate things I would never eat. Ribs. Wait, first off, you say that like you had fucking right monkey on the bone. Bra you had monkey brains. But you know me, I don't do a lot of stuff on the bone and fat gristly shit like that. You don't like it on the bone? Dude, I don't like it on the bone. I don't eat meat, but I sure like the bone. Oh, bam, 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 bam. Hey. Um I yeah, got Jack Stack, dude, it was so down. good. I ate baby back ribs. Oh, oh, dude, that's I love all that shit. I had a brisket, sausage, yeah. cornbread with jalapeno cheese and honey butter. Yeah, well, here's the thing about Kansas City. That's is that so is that good. dry barbecue or wet barbecue? It's wet. I know there's a, there's uh, you think Kansas City dry rub, dry it's rub. A style. I love Mission Dry Rub. It's a style, but it's a. Uh, but yeah, this was like they had barbecue sauce. Maybe that's why she was cracking ass. Dude, was, did you guys have barbecue at church? No, we didn't have it with her. No, mm. no. In fact, she, uh, me and Christine had to uh, hold back our barbecue farts like adults. Wait, was that the same day? No, that was the day after. Oh yeah, but she got out pretty quick. Yeah, no, she was, uh, uh, was a, a good person in that regard. Yeah, like a brand, like a bank robber threesome. Finished and split. Bells rang. She was gone. Yep, mm -hmm. ninety seconds. Totally got it. Don't fuck anything you can't leave in ninety seconds when you feel the heat coming around the corner. That's right. That's what I was saying. Well, you know, there's a flip side to that coin. Sometimes I'm going to want to stay over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to want to cuddle. I'm going to want to cuddle and watch a film so Some, I don't feel like a whore bag. Sometimes I want to wear one of your t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to tell me it's okay. I'm going to smoke your breakfast, and I'm probably going to wake up an hour early so I can take a shit before you notice. And then also, you know, I want to talk about your, your college career. Sarah McPants says, three-way girl. Jay was like, is that Jim Morrison on your shirt? She was like, uh, yeah, Jim Morrison. No idea. <laughs> she had no idea. That's great. She was wearing a Dora shirt. Yeah. But yeah, just a care. Jim Morrison shirt. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Fuck me, baby. I loved you guys. I didn't want to bug you too much. You weren't bugging us at all, Sarah McPants. You're the best. Uh, it was so cool to meet her. She was everything I'd hoped for. Everything you'd hope so. Uh, a beautiful young lady. So is that the first finding love? Is that the first fart in the face of Christine in the threesome? Oh, yes. absolutely. She was. Your, she was your first. Yeah, and it was my first one not drinking too. So it was like a double whammy. Your senses were heightened. Ugh. 
<laughs> you knew everything. No, and a good for the goose, good for the gander turn of events, though. Christine's hooked up with a chick before where she has accidentally farted, which has been fantastic. Oh, well, isn't Fant- it? Oh, yeah. It, oh, That yeah. is karma. Philadelphia stripper, yo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ripped the heater on her. Really? <laughs> Yeah, but the girls sometimes are cool. If the girls really in there, they're like, they're like, so it's marriage, so it's marriage. Because because oh, Christine will do that, and be like, oh god, <laughs> it's like everything just clamps off, just like a V up, like her knees are in her chest, just everything shut everything down, shut close up shop. Oh, dude, that's so great. We just got found out. Yeah, we've been compromised. We have been compromised. Burn it down. Burn, Burn it, it all down. down. I'm a shit. I'm a shit and just blow it all up. Yeah, I farted and then started smoking again. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> great. That was the night. Oh, you got back. Bathroom smell. Like I guess in this chick. Yeah. Give me, a, give me a red. Hey, hey, honey, while you're over at the box, can you grab me my lucky smoke? Uh. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah, now I'm gonna lick you clean, sweetheart. Just let me knock down this butt. Oh, it's always when the girls start going like vigorous hand working, and it's like. like, like that's what ends up happening. You need a canary in the coal mine. You need so something to let you know it's going to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, fucking, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, so it's happening on the other side of that. But, but I also don't believe Christine ever laid such a direct shot on anybody before. You I know, mean, that was there's like, ever been a kill shot like that. No, that was like a fucking it was between like it was the eyes. Like she was like, it was oh. like she wanted to do it. I feel like she was like a skunk and she gassed you. <laughs> she was like, I can't trust people back here. She is a juggalo. That might be the juggalo know. thing. She brought grapes and her own alcohol to the club. She yeah. was just like pulling food out of her purse. <laughs> I respect this woman. Oh, me too. She's a forward. I respect her very much. These are not, uh, I'm not saying anything negative. I mean, like, I, I don't know if the farts got me amped up to, to fuck again. But, uh, hey, hey, baby, did you just blow into my girl's face? Because <laughs> that answer is. Because <laughs> look at how hard I am. <laughs> yeah. Bring. yeah. Um, She's very pretty, though, and first black chick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, These are breaking barriers all kinds in Kansas City. We're knocking down walls. Yeah. Good for you. Next is a, um, a maybe we'll a try an Asian something. <laughs> we'll see what Thrinder brings our way. Thrinder? Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. Thrinder. No, but it changed the name. It changed names, yeah. It's called something else now. I don't remember. It's like, it's like something so it doesn't look so bad, I guess, on your thing for people who like... Yeah, we're getting a bill Don't yell it out. Don't yell it out. <laughs> uh, don't yell it out to a signal. It's hitting a satellite and bouncing across the entire country. <laughs> it's called Field? Field, yeah. F-E-E-L-D. F-E-E-L-D. That's what it is. Oh. And uh, we, got that. we got two responses. One's from a lady who's older, way down, it seems, in Virginia somewhere. That's a waste of time. And uh, and then that the cross-eyed girl who came out with the big big back, <laughs> <laughs> big back's the one that's gonna lose it for me every time. I'm sucker prefer a pretty face, and I've been with some some biggins before. Yeah. And I'm not throwing stones here, living in a glass house, but um, it's the back when a girl's got a crazy wide back. Yeah, there was a, a an open mic girl comic back in the day in Philly who was like a big chick, and it was all back, and it was a girl you just know it's like. If I just almost paid attention to her for three seconds and was like, hey, want to suck my dick anywhere in the world? Mm-hmm. She probably would do it. In a pit of lava? Uh, yes. And she'll probably do it, but you're just like, even that, where you're like, well, I won't really see her. I'm not attracted to her face and whatever. And these are, by the way, these are desperate thoughts of a fat kid who wasn't getting a bunch of pussy to, you know? But I was even like, even at lowering my standards to absolute low. A big heaving Tasmanian devil back, like, <laughs> like, 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 like being like, like seeing that go like heaving up and down over your lap is just a hard one to get past. Yeah, you're like, hey, I can get past a whole bunch of things. Not a big back. Girls who have like, I've had girls who've had like, like you know, small upper bodies and those crazy lower bodies. Their legs are like huge. And Sometimes they're huge. Yeah, yeah, they're half horse. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's, this one was half mule. <laughs> Hi, my name's Joanne. <laughs> um, I like full apples. But I've done that and been, and been <laughs> yeah. okay with it. Because if it's a pretty face and a good upper body, you can kind of focus on those things. Yeah. A big heaving back I can't get past. That's my one. 
Dude, I hooked up with this swimmer when I was in college, and she was like Olympic level swimmer. She didn't go to the Olympics, but uh, she was like my. She was like an inch shorter than me. She was like <laughs> she was like six two, and uh, dude, I remember fucking her, and she flexed her back, and I lost my boner right quick. That's hilarious. I, I was inside of her, and I, like I tried to do like an erotic back background, and she was just fucking <laughs> like the up. Her oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> she could crush it. She was like, Jesus, is this a man? Am I fucking Buck Angel? Is this a man? Is this a Dude, man? Buck <laughs> Angel. Dude, we had it was, a. Uh, it was crazy. It fucking took me out of it. I forgot. I mean, this, obviously, this piece of footage we'll have to show for you. Dude. <laughs> Not to give a free commercial for my own podcast, the SDR show. But yeah. Ralph, friend, no, give it. Do it. Our friend Ralph Sutton. Yeah. Uh, we had a girl on that show a couple weeks ago, six foot tall porn star named Mia Vallis. Vallis. Mm -hmm. So hot. Yeah. Body's great. She uh, masturbates on the show. And uh, yeah, so hot. She masturbates on the show to squirting. Mm -hmm. She Now, Ralph took, and I swear to you, two hits of weed. He doesn't smoke a lot of weed, granted, but he took two hits. And I don't mean two where it's like puff, puff, pass. Yeah. Two hits. Yeah. He goes, uh, we start the show. We're doing the show. This girl's masturbating, and uh, she tells Ralph to count down from 10. Okay. Backwards. He counts down from 10. He gets to one. She fires away. We're all cheering, having a great time. And then I look over at Ralph. I think I looked over at him. I look over at Ralph and he goes, uh, uh, yeah, I definitely smoke too much weed. And I go, ah, you know, Bob, no such things. I'm, I see I'm maybe getting a panic attack and I don't, I'm trying to like, keep him out of that. She is gorgeous. She's hot, yeah. We think she's having a, uh, I was like, I was like, maybe he's going to have a panic attack or something. So I'm looking at him and his eyes just go fucking blank. And I go, Ralph, <laughs> Ralph, <laughs> Ralph, dude, this girl sitting there with her pussy out just squirted. Yeah. Everyone in the room's all like, wow, look at this hot chick who just squirted for, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she's dildoing her. It was, it was crazy. And Ralph just starts, his hand just starts shaking. He starts having a fucking seizure. What? Yeah. And I'm like, Ralph, Ralph, Ralph. And I'm like grabbing him and like trying to hold him steady. And then we like pump water into him and he snapped out of it. But it was, he, he literally when he came out, he's like, what happened? <laughs> like, what? what? You missed what it. Dude, wait, there's video of it. I'll have to get it to show you. But dude, like, please bring that video in. You just see him go blank and starts wigging. Dude. It's oh, so weird. He's had a seizure. It was fucking bizarre. Oh, as a girl was squirting. That's a commercial to not smoke weed, man. Yeah, and Jesus. it's also the worst timing ever. To, you're going to give that woman a porn star. You're going to give her complexes. Oh, yeah. Like, she almost murdered her. like, what was it, dude? What's wrong? And he's squirting and, you know. By the way, she definitely, like, her and Ralph were kind of having a flirty thing. And that was good. I mean, he looked so lame, so there's no way that's going to happen to anything. She hung out so long afterwards because she got... and. In the middle of the show, Ralph invites Dave Smith into the room. I go, well, Ralph, you just invited the guy who's going to fuck her fuck her instead of you right now. And she was all about Dave immediately afterwards. Did Dave fuck her? No, I don't think so. But like he was like, uh, I think she's... Could've. He could have. He definitely could have if he made the plans with her. But like, Man, uh, I'm always missing out on these cool opportunities. Yeah, she was uh, she was pretty great. But Ralph had to sit there and like you know. No, dude, that's so funny when you lose your shit around a girl and you got to act cool. Oh, uh, every anything like that drug happens, yeah. uh, drug uncool, dude. One time I had a sweat where I had to sit down and drink water at a house party in high school, and this girl I was in love with who was from another high school was there, and she's like, "Soda, are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's just gravity bong hits, and I'm just sweating a lot." <laughs> just like over sweating, and my friend. Did Garrett, I kept bringing me glasses of water, and I was just sitting there like, oh, no, it's okay, Abby, I'm going to be okay. How are you? You're a junior, right? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Dude, I had a fucking, oh, yeah. uh, can't, can't I remember going on a first date and having like a coughing fit with popcorn in the back of my throat, <laughs> <laughs> making a real fucking scene in a movie, saying, <laughs> <laughs> almost choking in front of a woman is pretty <laughs> emasculating. I don't know how to swallow. Uh, should we take our last break? Oh, let's take our last break. So when we come back, I want you to take this call from Brian in San Diego Done. and uh, and tell your story. You want to take the call and then we take a break? No, let's take the break. Let's get it done, dude. Right. Let's get it fucking done, dude. It's the bonfire. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. 
It's all welcome and back songs today. May. All welcome backs. That's Mace, everybody. Oh, Mace. Bad Boy's finest. Mace. Oh, yeah. Dude, so yeah, you washed over the break. Uh, damn, washed Ralph <laughs> after the stroke. It's Dude, pretty that's hilarious. so fucking funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, it's funny just to watch. It's I mean, he's, funny, okay, he's, oh, by the way, he's okay. It's why it's hilarious. I was not... Oh, if you see, I do get genuinely like... Dude, I love Lou's, rea out. Lou's reaction. He just walks around the console and watches it, and he goes, huh, he's out on his feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he just walks back That happens to Lou a lot. Lou's like, oh, yeah, drinking seizure. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that look before. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, that guy's still there. He's there, but he's not there. But he started shaking. It was so scary. Uh, and everyone's so upset. And this girl just that's what I'm saying the timing of that's like this she's hot strict. straight up sucking pussy juice off a dildo and Ralph just starts going like, <laughs> like a flooded engine I looked at the shove a wallet in his mouth <laughs> dude it's so funny she's like mm, yum yum I love my own calm yum yum <laughs> and Ralph's like yummy yummy it's so hot to put my own oh, cheese in my tummy <laughs> And I just go, I must work because I go, uh, uh, no, I watched it, we watched it, I go, I go, ha, uh, Ralph, uh, hey, Ralph, come on, Ralph. Oh, Ralph, Ralph, you there? Ralph, what's happening? I, I, I wig and I fucking like grab, I don't wig actually, I kept it pretty together and, and took care of it, I guess, but like, oh, holy fuck. shit. Yeah, dude, that, uh. Christine's petrified in the video. Dave Chris Smith petrified. The girl is completely uncomfortable. Has no idea what to do. Her pussy's still out. She's holding a big, giant, curvy dildo. Dude, that, that's, that is... Yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, so, was that from me? Or, uh, did he blow a fuse? Or? One of the funniest things ever. Um, I, Brian's been waiting on hold for a while. I want him, He wants to talk to you, Soder, so I think maybe I have some advice for him here. Uh, Brian, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, guys? Crackle, crackle. Crackle, hey. crackle, dude. What's up, dude? Hey, what's going on, man? So, uh, I listen to your guys' show all the time, and, uh, Dan, I've, I, I've, uh, heard you on, like, YKWD, and I've heard you on Opie and, uh, Jim, and all that other stuff, and on the bonfire, and I know you went through, like, a huge period. You told, like, told all these stories where you were, like, living in, like, uh, like a just like a one bedroom or something like oh, that. Oh no, it's a windowless. It. Yeah, windowless bedroom. I still live in the same apartment. Yeah. I walk by that bedroom every day and I point at it. Yeah, well, you said yeah, you said you had all these like great times there, and you were just getting like fucked up all the time and oh. just drinking like crazy. And then at one point you were just like, "Damn, I gotta like stop." Yeah, like, I was just trying to figure out like, what did you do to like? Because I'm like at that point. Uh, like, I, 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 I heard you tell one story where you were just like, "Oh yeah, dude, I was just downing like." James, like I did like 12 Jameson shots a night or something like that and I was chasing oh, them here and I'm like I'm like was, at that point yeah I was doing um I would have about six or seven rounds a night and my rounds were a shot of Jameson and a bud back I mean, Jay knew me pretty well during those days. Christine knew me. That was pretty fun. So it was so cool back then. I was so cool. I was smoking cigarettes. I was saying, I was saying cool stuff off the top of my head. Such I was dude, like, "You're such a badass." Hey, man, don't go, don't go piss in an alligator pond if you don't want to get bit. <laughs> Another Jamo. Oh yeah, I got shot. This is a bullet wound. That's a knife wound. Learn the difference. So what Fancy do you think? Pants. What do you think um, this guy should do? Well, here's what my question. Do, is, I guess I, it just got it got to the point where I, it was uh, it was every night and I hated it. I started I started like wanting to stop and I couldn't stop. Like I'd walk into a bar and, and just start drinking, or I'd be like, I'm not going to drink tonight. And then I'd go to the comedy club and they'd be like, You want a beer? I'm like, Yeah, I'm just going to have beer. And then by like the fourth beer, I was like, I'm going to have a shot. And then it's back to the old. You should, uh, yeah, you should have almost called to talk to Christine too. She's fresh, she's fresh off the boat. No drinking for her, but I would say um, Christine and uh, actually I didn't eat. I had a, I had a drink with, I, again. I don't have like any kind of drinking issue, but like mm -hmm. um, I had a drink with uh, Kevin Hart actually in Montreal, but I didn't drink at all during Montreal at any of like the like nighttime hang party stuff ever and Christine didn't drink at all. Well, I mean, I guess I would say to you is uh do you want to quit drinking? You're done drinking? I don't want to, but uh well, no, I do and I know it's bad because like if you're doing it 7 days a week, like extreme, then and it's not like beer, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, you're drinking, you're you know, drinking whiskey. 
I'm drinking vodka, bro. Oh, fuck. Bad. Yeah, you're bad. Yeah, vodka's like... That's the last stop on really? the alcohol. Dude, if you're drinking a lot of vodka, you are straight up a booze bag. Why because is that more than... No, I say no, whiskey's no, that. No, no, no. no. There's no, no scent. No carbs. And no carbs. Well, oh, that's such a San Diego statement. There's no carbs. <laughs> but that's what I'm I think. Too, that's kind of my thing, too, is there's no car. I mean, that's well, listen, think. here's the thing about vodka. My, and it goes my, down my, the smoothest. My, the worst alcoholics I've ever known in my life, their bottom rung is just straight up drinking vodka. And every, they just fucking live to drink vodka. It's I like... Love. It, what's that? Pop off. Oh, Bartons. Pop off, Bartons, all that what about like silverware clean I and think, shit. I always thought whiskey was like the alcoholic drink. Whiskey can be, but whiskey's actually like in a weird way. It's like, um, I don't I don't know why in my, I don't know. I had a problem with whiskey. That you was guys want to get right? some drinks? I, more than anything. <laughs> every day. Yeah, I'm, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian, I'm coming out there for New Year's Eve. Let's get fucking tossed. <laughs> no, Brian, I would say, uh, I would say, you know, if you don't want to, if my best advice is read the book, The Easy Way to Quit Drinking by Alan Carr. Order that book on Amazon. It's called The Easy Way to Quit Drinking. Uh, okay. um, a friend and former lover of mine, Nikki Glazer, got it. And it fucking, uh, she bought me the book and it changed my life. And I, I read it, and it, it kind of, it puts, you know, I would say, if you really think you need to stop and you can't stop, I would go to AA. Um, but I, I use the If book. you think you can't stop, won't stop, you're then, part of bad boy. Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> bad boy. Then you're a bad boy for life. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, 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 the whole reason I never went the uh, AA route is because, like, man, I had to go to a few of those, and I was like, yo, these people just bring me down, dude. I don't well, know. yeah, it's not exactly a positive fucking yeah, club to join. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not really. You're not enjoying it but to what, hear the good, uplifting stories. I think if you listen, this isn't a guarantee, obviously. But I think if you're not at the point where it's like you're drinking to not be sick, you can just quit. No, you get the DTs. Huh? That's where it's like medically problem. If you're if you're drinking not to be sick, well, no, I'm saying that. I'm saying that. that then you can't. Then, then you need like a, a, a AA program, like yeah. a real medical thing. I think if you're drinking like socially every night. You just got to stop doing that. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not experts, but we're just giving our personal opinions. But I would say, man, if you feel like you need to quit drinking, you probably need to quit drinking. But I would say you've already, you just called a radio show and asked a guy who quit drinking on how to quit drinking. And that was always my thing. It was like, when I finally got to the point where I was like, I should stop. I started asking people and I was like, oh yeah, this is a definite sign I need to quit. So I would say just to, for starters, read that book. Cause he's not going to tell you to quit drinking until after you read the whole book. And I would say if you just do more blow, you won't get drunk. There's no point in drinking True. anymore. You need an upper for a downer. So if you just get fucking just spun out on fucking coke then then the booze won't do anything anyway they're and probably I mean, easy to walk away from and, and then, you to, then you attack the coke problem yeah and i'm just trying to help you actually from a financial uh, aspect i would go methamphetamines you're already in the southwest yeah. highly available yeah 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 you midwest trucker up. crank you could also stay up way longer than coke that's true and san diego has and i mean this in this country the best ice the hottest chicks in this country oh yeah well, san diego by far insane. but brian we were, we were joking around about doing meth or cocaine please yeah but just know you're not gonna get any of that pussy if you're sober yes you will I, uh, you're oh, gonna see, so you much will, though. you will though i mean i'm sorry we're a positive show dude you will though hey as a sober guy it can happen it's just like super awkward and you have to yeah work. no good luck dude brian are you still there that works out for you buddy yes i'm still here okay thank god hey, take care of yourself <laughs> man take care of yourself <laughs> and thank buy you, that man. book appreciate yes get that book man do what you gotta do Stay healthy. Last, last thing, soda. Yeah. Was it just was it just cold turkey? You're just like, yo, I'm done, and then that was that. My day, last day. day one, yeah, yeah, my last. Like, I'm, I'm done, and then that was it. That was. Oh, never. dude, I tried quitting drinking about a good fifteen times, and then finally, I had a, an event. I was working for Guinness, and I just had my last event where I had like legally drink, like contractually drink. And I, it was in Denver, where I grew up. So I was like, "Fuck it, man! It's gonna be my last night of drinking." And it was March eighth, two thousand thirteen. And just you know, I haven't had a drink well, since. Job, well, I mean, it's easy because like Joe List quit before me, and he was three months ahead of me, and he was basically there to like hold my hand through it and be like, "Yeah, go for the first ninety days, eat whatever you want, drink whatever you want. You just don't drink alcohol." And then after the ninety days, he was like, "You know, here's some books to read and shit." So you gotta. That's why AA is great because you do have the mentor process. You have you have a you know someone to that you're actually accountable to outside of yourself. And Christine hasn't had a drink since she said she's going to stop drinking, I guess, a couple weeks ago at this point now. And uh, although 
She did get a little fucking looped up on um, that girl's vodka induced fart right to the fucking <laughs> to blank, just point like, blank, point blank uh, shot. Maybe that was pure ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, oh, I call my farts moonshine. <laughs> this is pure booze. Uh, uh, yeah, but good I, luck, Brian. Good luck, Brian. Thank you, guys. You got it, brother. You're in San Diego. I just become a scotch. I love scotch. Scotch, scotch, scotch. scotch, scotch. Just, become a, down. just become a sex addict in San Diego. <laughs> so okay. we do have a new not live coming out on Wednesday, but next yeah. week we come back live, and uh, when we do, we have to talk about our festival adventures. We didn't get yeah, to yeah Montreal and Dublin. Montreal and Dublin. Our it's international, our international stories. And we do have international stories. And I got some fun stuff from uh, f- definitely some fun stuff from Montreal. I know you got a doozer from Dublin. I do. It was great. Are you hanging out with Joe? Shampoo! (laughs) Shampoo! (laughs) Shampoo! Ah, your friend keeps screaming shampoo at me. I'm going to punch him right in his (laughs) face. Shampoo! Shampoo! Dublin, am I I being referred? Shampoo! (laughs) Is your friend Protestant? Because he keeps saying shampoo in a Protestant way. (laughs) Uh, Philadelphia, go check out Big J this weekend. Thursday, August 11th through Sunday, August 14th at Helium Comedy Club, one of the best comedy clubs in the country. You can get your tickets at BigJComedy.com. Also, pick up his special live from Webster Hall on iTunes. Also, a bunch of other streaming services, but make sure you check it out. Uh, easily one of the best specials of Thanks, the buddy. year. I think I booked to that uh, Portland here. I'm excited to do the other Heliums. It's great, man. I uh, Portland? I just did Buffalo a couple weeks ago. Buffalo's great. I do Buffalo. I've I never love- done... I haven't done Good Nights yet. I haven't done... I love it. Oh, uh, you've done that one? Yeah, I've done Good Nights and I have Portland. Done, I haven't done St. Louis, but I'm, I'm excited I for Portland. I haven't done St. Louis and then Cap City and I all. some real fun gigs coming up, man. I got, after Oddball... I mean, I'm going on Oddball tour starting yes. very, very soon. Yeah. In three weeks, but... um. So I'll be doing the second stage on that. Uh, everywhere. The whole tour. The whole tour I'll be uh, hosting the small mm. stage. So come out and say hi. And um, also, make sure you check out Dan Soder's special, not special, available on iTunes and a whole bunch of other uh, mediums. Uh, he's also he's going to be at the Tempe Improv in Tempe, Arizona this weekend, yeah. Friday, August 12th and Saturday, August 13th. Hey, if you remember from college, come out and give him an HJ or something. Yeah. And also get your tickets at dansoder.com. And uh, everyone, if you're listening, me and Dan, if you're in New York, we are both going to be performing tomorrow night on the Race and Sex Show at the Standing Room in Long Island City tomorrow night. That is an 8 p.m. show, Tuesday, August 9th. Tomorrow night, me and Dan both on that show. Tickets available at standingroomlic.com. Follow us on the Bonfire SXM uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And don't forget to let the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into your heart. I think that's the message that we say. Follow his path, and you will be righteous. (laughs) Crackle, crackle, everybody. Next week. Bye, guys.